Hello guys and welcome to the build video guide for the Imotoro Sukoza which as the name suggests revolves around being both very hard to kill whilst making use of both dual and single katana. There is a lot I want to get through so if at any point you get impatient and want to skip ahead I will provide timestamps in the description so that you can go ahead and do that. I want to start off by saying during my time playing Neo and doing my research when theory crafting I obviously spent a lot of time on forums and watching other YouTubers and I think a lot of credit deserves to go the way of people like Project War and Barbarian 
for essentially inspiring the template for a lot of my builds, including this one, so shout out to those guys. But obviously I've spent countless hours optimizing and tuning these builds to my specific playstyle, which is what I want to share with you guys. Okay, so to start things off, I want to talk about what this build is all about and who it's aimed for. And to be honest, due to the nature of this build, it would actually be easier to start off by saying what this build isn't and who it isn't for as really I can only think of about two things that this build isn't. One of those things being it's a B agility build. So if you want to play a super lightweight A agility glass kind of ninja build, this isn't going to be that because you will be wearing heavy armor. And the second thing this build isn't is a one shot living weapon build designed for like, you know, farming floor 900 plus in abyss. This build is primarily designed to function across the board outside of living weapon. That said, you can still farm floor 900 plus in abyss with this build and it's still effective within living weapon. It's just not going to perform as well as a build designed for that specific purpose. The first thing to know about this build is it is incredibly tanky. In fact, it was almost too tanky in its original state, which is why I adapted it to incorporate a bit more emphasis on damage output as before I literally could not die but I didn't feel that sense of satisfaction of being able to like near one shot high level enemies and bosses like I can now. So what I have now is kind of a hybrid between pure elemental damage reduction, pure skill damage output and then in the middle we've got like very good damage reduction and very good general damage output. Everything you see in the video is on way of the Neo difficulty and my character is max level and the gear powered up from the highest floors in the abyss etc. However, for those of you who are mid-level and don't have access to that kind of power, I will still show you ways you can tailor it to your level. This build mostly makes use of skill-based attacks and parries. There's little need to stance dance with this build as you're pretty much sitting in high stance on the Jewel Katana, making use of Windstorm and creating opportunities to execute your sign across cross skill. Same goes for the single Katana, you'll primarily be sitting in mid-stance this time to make use of your parries and creating opportunities to execute your IE quick draw skill. So we'll start with the gear, then we'll go over the stats and stuff afterwards, so don't worry about that stuff just yet. For this or any advanced build you will obviously be needing an accessory with a minus one to set bonus requirements. Starting with our weapons, we've got our dual and single katana. Now what's important to note here is I use my dual katanas primarily for yokai and tougher bosses. This is also the general weapon I use for running around in the world of Neo. The single katana, however, is very specifically for human enemies and it's focused around parrying and doing damage once again to humans specifically. So in regard to their set bonuses, the dual katanas aren't tied to anything else. You can take what dual katanas you want. I use these ones simply because they're the most powerful ones that I have and the stats on them are the ones that I need, which I'll get into later. However, on the single katana, I'm running with a four piece of the Oyamatsumi's Grace, which is also coming from my two ranged weapons. And this is for the four piece bonus that is close combat damage. Next we have four pieces of Tatanashi which provides us with a whole host of damage reduction including both direct damage uh, but more importantly elemental damage reduction and also offers a small damage increase for equipment weight and as I said earlier we do bring this build up to a B agility rating. For the available piece I'm running with a master swordsman chest armor piece for two reasons one it gives us a decent amount of skill key reduction which is one of the best bonuses I can see coming from a two set bonus and it also boosts the aggressiveness of the playstyle especially given that this is a heavy armor build. Speaking of which this set is another heavy armor piece which might seem strange given the earlier mention of equipment weight damage bonus but there is a reason full heavy armor benefits us which we'll get into later. Apart from the grace, the actual ranged weapons themselves are optional, but we'll go over those as well as the accessories in the stats section of the video, uh, which actually we'll just move on to now. So on the dual katana, the stats I'd say you have to have are familiarity damage, A+, sign of the cross skill damage, change to attack for either skill or heart, and you will want either skill damage like I have, or close combat damage. Either is fine, but ideally you will want to pick whichever one you have less of before applying this stat. So without this weapon, let's say you have 30% skill damage at base, and let's say you have 20% close combat damage at base. In that situation, you'd want to take close combat damage on your weapon because you would have had less of it at base. So you're less likely to suffer from diminishing returns when you stick more of it on. So basically, if you go too high with a certain stat, you're going to hit a point where you start receiving less and less benefit from it. Uh, that's called diminishing returns. So try and pick up the one you're most in need of. In my case, they were both roughly equal. So I chose skill damage just because I was lucky enough to find a weapon that had 20% uh, skill damage inheritable. So I managed to just swap that over to this one. The optional roles here are Pierce Guard uh, and Weakened Melee Weapons. It might seem weird that um, I have Pierce Guard on this weapon considering I mostly use Dual Katana just for killing Yokai and stuff, whereas my Single Katana is the one that's used for killing uh, humans, and obviously this perk is only really useful against humanoids. But with my Single Katana, I'm really actually trying to bypass Guard. I'm mostly using it to parry, whereas on here, sometimes if I'm feeling lazy, I can stay in a high stance 
with the dual katana and just smash my way through guarding enemies and they will die especially um, when using another little trick regarding spirit guardians which i'll explain later but this role is optional and somewhat less optional in terms of what this is about but it's still up to you is the weakened melee weapons uh, when spamming windstorm on an enemy in fact not even spamming like if you just hit it once almost every time it's going to apply this debuff and getting counter hit whilst this enemy has this debuff on them is significantly going to reduce the damage that you're going to receive from that hit this is by far the best defensive stat available on a weapon so i highly recommend it one additional note i don't have an element on my weapon as it's a complete waste of a slot considering you can just manually apply any element you want before a major engagement so for the single katana i've got human close combat damage as i only use this versus humans if you don't have access to human damage specifically obviously you can just go with skill damage or regular close combat damage in this slot then the must-haves are familiarity damage skill damage for ie quick draw and change to attack either skill or heart optional roles here are parry and skill break personally taking parry is a no-brainer for me because I'm always parrying with this weapon, it's the ability I use the most and skill break because it's the second most used action on my katana as both IE quick draw and an ability called flowing shadow which are both skills so having skill break on there just gives a little boost to me being able to bypass defenses when we're doing what I'll be doing anyway with this weapon. Now for ranged weapons you can have whatever you want like I said these particular weapons were chosen simply for the four piece bonus on Oyamatsumi's grace just make sure you've got um, equipment lightness damage bonus on both of them that's all you need on these weapons in terms of the meta stat. That would just give a small blanket buff, nothing you really need to worry about in terms of optimizing. It does synergize with the various dynamics going on within the build in terms of us wearing heavy armor and moving up to be agility, etc. But I don't want this video to become too convoluted, so just get equipment lightness damage on both of your ranged weapons and just do what you want with the rest. So in this slot here, I've just got this, yeah, it's whatever. However, this, and it is true that ranged weapons aren't essential to this build, but this baby right here is very useful so I'll just go over this in DO as you might want to mimic it if I explain a little bit how I use it not everybody likes cannons they're slow uh, like you can't strafe of them and stuff like that but anyone who uses them know just how beastly they can be like they do a hell of a lot of damage but more importantly they do a lot of key damage and they stagger all that good stuff but when you've got the rolls that I've got here okay so apart from the standard must-have stat here that we've covered we've got no guard break this alone has carried me through certain boss fights where I've been able to just bunker down under fire and just barrage the boss in their face. Not only doing significant damage but allowing yourself to line up those potential auto knockdown headshots, drain their key which results in an enemy disable. And then if you've got pierce card and key damage, if they even try and block, it's only going to last so long before they're either dead or they're key drained. And the only risk to doing this is if they either decide to rush you, which means they drop their guard allowing you to time up that headshot, or they pelt you with range damage. And with this build, you've got reduced firearms damage and you're practically immune to elemental damage, which we'll get into later. So they won't win in a range battle either. Really give this a try if you can, it's so fun. I even managed to cheese Nova Naga on Abyss Floor 996 with pretty much only using the cannon. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, sorry, moving on to the armor pieces. The must-haves on Helm are Attack, which by the way, you must have on every single piece of armor. So I'm not going to mention this for every piece, just know that you have to have it on everything. And on the Helm, you also want weight reduction, as we need to get that B agility rate, and otherwise you're just going to be too cumbersome. Can't play efficiently with this weapon set. If you're slow to move, dodge, engage, disengage, the difference between C and B rating is just too drastic. You can swap certain stats around if you want the weight reduction to be on different pieces of armor. Basically, you just need it to roll on two pieces of gear, doesn't matter which piece of gear. Though I'm not sure if having weight reduction on a heavier piece of gear makes a difference. I haven't actually tested that, but optional rolls here are tenacity. You do not need this. I personally use it because sometimes I like to use leech and talisman to drain all my life and then they're a critical state when trying to, you know, just one shot bosses for fun and getting cool footage and stuff. It's not really as mater as it used to be since the uh, living weapon critical nerf, but it's still useful as a passive for the rare situations where you're about to die and you've got a state's effect on you, like you're poisoned or you're burning. This will prevent you from dying to one of those debuffs ticking over on your last hit, so really it's up to you if you want this or not. Nullify weakening head protection, so you don't need it. It's a bit more tankiness, but it can be countered by certain enemies becoming stronger depending on how many of these kind of perks you have in your gear, so honestly, it's whatever, take it or leave it. Auto recovery on Amrita Absorption, the stat that one shot builds used to avoid due to the old leeching critical living weapon silliness. Well, I'm always absorbing Amrita and I like healing, so no brainer for me to take this perk. The stats on my chest piece, I would recommend you take everything that I have here 
The most optional would probably be the life increase, but the rest here are pretty fundamental when it comes to damage mitigation. As with damage, you have both your raw defense and situational defense, and there are lots of modifiers in this game that change the way you earn or lose stats under certain conditions. It would be wise to use as many modifiers to your advantage as possible, so that's things like increased defense when you're at critical health state, increased defense when you've got a status element on you, and same thing goes for the attack modifiers. You're always going to be in one or more of these situations at any given time, so it would make sense for you to be benefiting from being in them. Now, received elemental attack damage. You want this, you need this. The aim for this build is to reach at least 80% elemental damage reduction, which can be easily achieved if you get the same stats on your gear that I have. To reach 100% is a little bit harder because you'll need those to roll on your accessories as well, but you can easily get 80% gear rolls alone due to the fact that we're using Tatanashi for the set bonus and all you have to do is reforge a couple of pieces of your gear to get this stat here. So it's 100% doable. For your gloves, you'll need close combat attack. The rest you can decide for yourself. I take deflection because it's very useful at being able to kill ranged enemies just by like time blocking. And I've also got timely guard increased attack because not only does it synergize with things like deflection, but we're also parrying and time guarding a lot when using our single katana. So this perk is pretty useful to my specific playstyle. For your legs, you want increased attack whenever you receive a status ailment. So as we were saying earlier, it's another situation you're going to find yourself in all the time. Activating these modifiers, and if you took what I suggested earlier on your chest piece, you're not only going to be increasing your defense in these situations, but you'll also be increasing your attack at the same time if you take this. So you're effectively just getting stronger and stronger the more the enemy throws at you. Then optionally, I've got more toughness when over 50% key and increased running speed and life. Then on your boots, you need weight reduction. Again, you can swap this with another arm piece. You just need it on two pieces. So it can go in place of one of the other optional stats somewhere else. Uh, I've got recovery on purification, which is something that I'm always doing. So it's a nice passive regeneration ability. And I find running speed incredibly useful, especially given that I'm used to playing glass cannon A agility builds. No one likes running slow and evasion key usage for those particularly intense fights that require a lot of dodging and rolling around. For my accessories then, the only things that I think are essential, apart from the obvious minus one to bonus requirements, is yokai damage uh, and elemental damage reduction. But I understand that it's not going to be easy to obtain, it's completely random, uh, obviously you can't re-roll accessories. There are other options, if you like spending time in living weapon, which I honestly rarely do outside of abyss farming, there are a lot of great stats you can get on your accessories that boost living weapon. They're always a viable choice and usually what I would switch to when abyss farming. For the core stats then, now as I said earlier in the video, I'm max level so my stats are going to reflect that. However, this build is still accessible to people who've reached a certain point in the game so I'll try and explain what that point might be and I'm sorry I can't be 100% accurate on this without resetting my stats and actually testing it out myself but I'm pretty sure about what you would need so you'd need to start by putting points in order of absolute priority for example I think you'd need 17 or 18 points in strength before you can even wear the armor that we're wearing uh, you'd need 14 in dex 32 magic, 25 spirit, um, and then this is why you have to have the stats after you roll the stats in your gear. Um, you'll need to adjust how much stamina you have based on your current agility rating. So once your gear's all set up and you've got the equipment weight reduction rolled on it and stuff like that, that's when you want to start putting points in stamina. And as you're putting points into stamina, you'll see on the right, there'll be a little percentage of what your weight is, and that will change every time you put a point in. And you want to make sure that you stop under 70%. Basically, as long as you go under 70%, you're going to be hitting that be agility rate and if it's over 70% you're still going to be C. So if you just go nuts into the stamina tree eventually you're going to hit a diminishing returns point where points in strength will actually start giving you more weight reduction but I'm not sure what point that is. Uh, I know that it's pretty late into the tree though you know where you've got to have a lot of points to spend. So if you wanted to be absolutely optimal you could just put 57 or so points in strength and 15 in stamina that way you're increasing a bit of damage as well but if you wanted to just be uh, simple and easy i would just start putting points into stamina watching the equipment weight percentage on the right and stopping just when you see it getting close to under 70 percent and then you can experiment with putting more points in strength and stuff but yeah just stop once you're under 70 percent then personally i would go for 99 points in skill first and just use your dual swords until you can start dumping into heart and obviously at some point you want to put points into heart because that's what's going to give you your key and enable to use your single katana efficiently as well for the clan house it's entirely optional but i'm in toto not really for the increased defense but more so for the attack boost from heavy armor for spirit guardians absolutely 100 best in slot main guardian is going to be kato it boosts both close combat attack and skill damage 
And your second guardian is where it gets fun because it will all depend entirely around what you're doing in the game. So the best general second guardian in my opinion is Ayakamori as you'll be getting a raw 9% damage increase whenever you hit an enemy from behind which you should be doing a lot of the time by default anyway when moving around the back to avoid direct attacks. If you know you're going to be fighting humans and this is my little secret to absolutely destroying bosses like Ryu Hayabusa and why I also have Pierce Guard on my jewel swords. So for certain enemies like him I don't actually use my single katana. I'll stay on the dual katanas and with the pierce guard roll on them switch Ayakamori out for this centipede guardian and you're gonna get another 14% damage bypass on guarding and I'm telling you you can just windstorm in high stance on dual katana and absolutely destroy enemies who block like without even trying just spin to win it's not pretty but it's incredibly efficient and ideal for farming certain enemies in the game if you like doing the uh, leech and talisman one shot stuff which is what you saw me do on Maria in the montage at the very beginning basically just take Hinazumi the little mouse thing pop leeching to get into a critical state apply your debuffs to the enemy get behind them hit them with your hardest hitting ability and Hinazumi should boost the damage of that by around 11% which is what allows you to do the 31 shots and bosses that you always see in videos it's pretty cool but honestly it's not very practical for general play moving on to weapon abilities then for a single katana all you need is sword of salvation for making the parries easier that's the mystic art by the way and the parries themselves that you want are back wave 2 and haze 2 and out of those two, you want to only be actively trying to use Haze. It's the most reliable. It can be used on most enemies. And Backwave is something that you can get to try and trigger by accident a lot of the time, just by blocking reactionally at the last second. Then pressing block again to activate the Backwave. I'll get into this stuff more in my next video. Um, you also want to pick up the Flow and Shadow ability and obviously IE Quick Draw. Together, these are the only things you need to be using with your Katana. Staying in mid stance, haze parrying, setting up the IE quick draw and using flowing shadow to damage aggressive targets that you're unlikely to be able to parry in that moment. For dual katanas you want um, firm resolve. This is pretty fundamental to the build in terms of bolstering your defensiveness. Especially when you're applying melee weapon weakness if you took that on your dual katanas. You obviously need sign of the cross and you'll want windstorm. Pretty much the same situation here with the single katana except this time you stay in high stance. Windstorm is your main DPS until you can set up sign of the cross and ideally combo them or try and chain your sign of the cross several times. It should kill most enemies in the game if you manage to pull it off cleanly. Um, for ninjutsu you want the enlightenment mystic art. Uh, I suggest picking up quick chain scroll to help you survive any engagements that might kill you. Uh, you generally want to be carrying a tiger running scroll to speed around very quickly. Uh, you might want to pick up catwalking and supper scrolls for making speed runs on certain levels easier. Beyond that it's entirely up to you what else you pick. But for Omeo Magic uh, you'll want the Awakening Mystic Art. Carnage Talisman as your main offensive buff. You'll be needing Steel Talisman as your main defensive buff and make sure you always use this directly after your Carnage to mitigate the defensive debuff from it. Uh, Weakness Talisman which is probably the most important spell in the game. You want to put this on any bush you're trying to kill. You know if you want a one or two shot boss in this game as well this or any build you will need weakness talisman to do that uh, pick up an element weapon buff of your choice i generally use water but situationally will use fire as well sloth talisman is very useful if you need help cheesing a boss as it trivializes everything but i'm sure you probably already knew that uh, kekai talisman is good for auto purging yokai realms extraction talisman is really good if you want to use your living weapon and you have modifiers that extend the duration of a uh, living weapon when you absorb amrita to be honest just any modifier that's affected by amrita absorption you can pick up leeching talisman if you want to practice those literal one shots but obviously that's not essential um earth folding is pretty good to make quick escapes back to the shrine i use that a lot when um abyss farming like say you die and then you want to reset so just run in and you grab your spirit guardian off the floor and then pop earth folding you'll go straight back to the shrine and you can reset it's pretty good and uh spirit guardian talisman works great with certain guardian spirits to initiate a knockdown on certain enemies i think that's pretty much everything in terms of omio magic um, I was going to make a playstyle guide within this video, but I think this video is already getting too long, so what I think I'm going to do is make a separate video next, going over exactly how to use Sign of the Cross and IE Quick Draw, how to parry and you know set up combos and stuff like that, but for now I'll just say, if you're doing things exactly like I am in this build so far, you'll be using your Jewel Swords most of the time, make sure you're using them on things like Yokai, they should pretty much be your default weapon in most situations, stay in higher stance, spam Windstorm, set up sign of the cross switch to single katana for human enemies and land the haze parries set up the ie quick draw and use flowing shadow as your general dps skill that's going to be it for the video guys thank you all for joining me if you like the video i would highly appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed consider doing so for more content coming soon and all things new thanks very much guys take care